Hi everybody, welcome back to the Wireless Watch weekly wrap-up, the Wednesday uh, whiz, there we go, whiz through the latest edition of Wireless Watch. My name is Alex Davis, Wireless Watch is a industry newsletter covering the mobile sector, and I will minimise myself now down to the corner of the screen, but first step of course, if you are not a subscriber, is head to rethinkresearch.biz, uh, but over on the right here is the cover page of Wireless Watch 1030. So I'm going to sort of rattle through the top stories, well, all the stories, but you know, pulling out the the highlights. So rethinkresearch.biz, head into the Wireless tab. Nice, nice little pod, uh, pod pop up here for our upcoming webinar. So that's on fixed wireless access because RAN Research, which is our market forecasting service, has just published that. So that's a free freebie, so make sure you head to the website to subscribe. Ellie's just published a great podcast with the CEO of Talent, Joe Gretton. So that's another one to, to go and browse. And you can find them up here in the tab, the forecast data, podcast webinars, and consulting if you're interested too. So uh, yeah, as usual, one article is free to read. And this week, this is something that Ellie kind of discovered and explored in a trip to capacity europe which is a sort of wholesale you know back back of the world sort of back of network yeah uh, event where where lots of deals are being struck which is kind of unusual because it, it it felt a bit like speed dating is is how ellie describes it in the piece so it's a it's a world that we don't cover much but it's something that is sort of very important and the the context here is that these networks are quite vulnerable. We're seeing increasing outages, and in a time of extreme weather and like political instability, you know, geopolitical instability as well, there's uh, a need, right, to check that your backup system works properly. So these are sort of existential questions for operators, and I think they should be exploring it. So something that we don't touch on much, but I think is important for context. There's a tractor just going past, moving silage about. So, uh, next one. This is me talking about the sort of looming Google Department of Justice showdown. This is the fallout from the Department of Justice's successful lawsuit that, you know, the judge rules Google is abusing a monopoly position. And Google has responded and with its, with its own sort of proposed remedies. And we're beginning a process that's going to see both parties try to agree on the outcome and it's it's expected that a structural remedy is going to be put in place instead instead of a, a behavioral remedy so we're going to see assets divested rather than you know a, a document that google signs and says we pinky promise not to you know share data between xyz so this piece is exploring what that will look like and yeah long time coming this is from philip hunter this is the Mixed results for U.S. disaster mitigation. So this is exploring the sort of fallout of Helene and, and Milton and how the mobile network operators are recovering and the different sort of impact of both hurricanes, again touching on the disaster recovery angle. Here is an exploration of Ether, which was part of the Open Networking Foundation, but has been graduated. And we had a prompt to make sure that our you know, registrations were up to date, and that, that kicked off an exploration of how ETH is going. And Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, has released a sort of a commercial beta, and there's going to be a sort of test demonstration next week at one of its big developer events. So if you're interested in a open source 5G core, uh, but the, yeah, Ether, the Ether project is where you want to go. So that's something worth reading if you're into that sort of infrastructure. SMS, artificial inflation of traffic. This is Ellie exploring a kind of murky world, a seedy world of fraudulent traffic, which is different various uh, estimates, but Twitter is apparently $60 million worse off because of this. And in a world where the operators are talking about network APIs as a new revenue opportunity, that they haven't got a good grip on artificial inflation of traffic via SMS is kind of damning. So I'm not sure if uh, the long-term impact on network API can be seen through this lens, but this is something that I think people need to be aware of. 
Ellie talks in this piece about the Capacity Europe wholesale event. So this is the sort of high-level takeaways from that that trip. So another classic, you know, we went to a trade show and these were the vibes angle. So that's that's worth exploring. Ellie will undoubtedly tell us more about that and her trip to Ericsson's OSS BSS conference in Paris on, on the, the next podcast we record. So tune into that to learn how those two events line up with each other. Phil here writing about Siemens going global. So this is a massive industrial firm taking private 5G as a commercial opportunity. So outmaneuvering the MNOs. There's a, a key partner here, which is LS Telecom, and that's a, a German integrator, systems integrator. And the pair of them are, yeah, it looks pretty promising. So, you know, missed opportunity for the MNOs, but this is what happens. You, you leave the door open, and these very big firms will use these services and technologies, they'll use them internally. And then they'll launch them as, as services if they think they can they can make a buck on it. Phil here exploring KDDI, selecting Samsung's Open RAN stack and, and technology and services. This is in the context of KDDI to having a sort of joint network build out project with its rival SoftBank in Japan. So this is you know multiple overlapping interests that the Wireless Watch likes to cover, which is sort of network resilience, resiliency, overbuilding the sort of uh, clash of, of different infrastructure and open round I guess is a salve if, if you've got different architectures that need to be kind of reconciled with each other the new ecosystem for data centers in Europe this is kind of tying into some of the the subtler sort of concerns that were picked up on in, in capacity Europe which is where the in the UK the data centers are like recognized as national like critical infrastructure so like building them is, is a lot simpler than in Europe and there are quite a lot of people moaning about this that Europe is lagging behind in, in new data centers and something needs to change so Ellie explored this tension that that we kind of un, unearthed at Capacity Europe and generally like the the boom period for data centers might have been over there's there's questions about whether that's still kind of growing but like at the same time that all this edge computing requirement is is popping up there's you know this this existential question if you're a data center operator of will people keep demanding these big centralized hubs or are we going to move to like a diffused and distributed compute uh, sort of market next one classic from phil eSIM. phil is our eSIM subject matter expert but this is mercedes-benz sort of tying a deal together for a global roaming agreement where eSIM is is central to it so that it's you know one single deployment works everywhere these cars end up that's not necessarily because it expects cars to move between markets it's more that it can kind of centralize production you know, centralize modules and and deploy them knowing that they should work in whichever market that it's building these cars for so uh, yeah massive company making waves in eSIM this is a sort of interesting one it, it's kind of contextual this is amd and intel forming a the x86 ecosystem advisory group which is i think cynically this is a way for them to try and shore up x86 against this kind of looming arrival of arm based processors also the the sort of emergence of ai based or sort of ai focused silicon architectures and also things like fpga and asic and gpu like all these things that are kind of eroding the importance of x86 this is an a and d and an intel joining up to try and um yeah create a wall and and if if they can get people on board because there's a you know a fairly influential list of members then they can try to ensure that x86 is important for not just general purpose you know computing and there's a lot of inertia in the data center so it's not super worrying but it's it's notable these are two fierce rivals who have recognized that the barbarian is at the gates the stock tracker um can't show you the graphs obviously they're behind a paywall but the operators had a great week they they posted a very strong result they beat the wider market and they also beat the vendors which is it's rare and we had five operators which were all above three percent except for for number five which was technically technically 2.99 but you know maybe we can give it but that was a very consistent top five one of the best on record and and the best for the operators because usually it's it's a pretty sad reading and then finally yeah worth noting um this is if i pan over to the right hand side um this is the 
sort of big combo section where we we combine everything together and uh yeah lots lots of tidbits in there that are worth reading so uh yeah just to conclude then over on the right we've got wireless watch ran research that's your mobile network cellular telco kind of thing fault line which is sort of pay tv ott video workflows delivery distribution that's the weekly newsletter rethink tv is the forecasting piece of that so that's our, our video services fault line tv and then rethink energy as well if you're into renewable energy that will conclude our little wireless watch weekly wrap up and i'll say bye bye please check out the webinars podcast consulting and market research too so take care bye bye